The following podcast was recorded on Monday, June 13th, 2022, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Today, Jim details the reaction of Friday's CPA, CPI report in the last two days. Jim, what happened to transitory? Yeah, uh, Friday's CPI report was a real shocker. It came in at for the May reading at 1% when the guesstimate by the street was 0.7 and the highest estimate was 0.9. So it beat all of the estimates. Now, why am I going back to Friday's number? Because everything changed after that number. Going into that number, and we talked about this in our podcast last week as well, maybe a third to 40% of the crowd, the Wall Street crowd, thought that inflation was still transitory. That is, The Fed doesn't have to do anything. It will peak. It will go away by itself. And when that number came out, what we saw was a giant move in the markets that is nothing short of a capitulation of that 33 to 40 percent ish crowd that still thought that the Fed was soon going to pause, what inflation would soon peak and go away on its own, and that that would prove to be something along the lines of transitory. And so that's what changed everything, I think, is we have got a a marketplace that now has finally exercised itself of transitory. It's taken this long. Um, Is two or three days of horrific markets enough to get us to fully price in non-transitory? I I don't know. I, I don't think anybody knows whether or not we've done enough or if there's more to have to come at this point. But this is now the start of that process. And what has been the market's reaction? You know, there's an old saying in the market that when the tide, Warren Buffett said it, when the tide goes out, we find out it's swimming naked. Well, a lot of people are swimming naked. Uh, Or another way to say it is when markets go into difficulty, every problem arises at the same time. So not only do we have the stock market tanking 9% in three trading days, 4% of that was today, Monday, (laughs) Monday, June 13th, but we also had what was unprecedented. Over those same three days, the two-year note yield is up 55 basis points. That's one of the biggest rises in the history of the two-year note over any three-day period. You've got to go back to 1982 when yields were already at 13% to begin with, not a two and and crossing over to three like they are now, to find another like type of move. So it's been 40 years. And when you couple the two, that yields went up this much as stocks went down this much, I went back to 1962 and I couldn't find an example that was even remotely close to what we're seeing now. In other words, that stock and bond prices are getting killed so much simultaneously that that is unprecedented. Now, what that suggests is that there is a widespread fear that inflation is going to hurt everything. But it isn't just it isn't just those two. The ten-year yield was up. the The yield curve briefly inverted. Uh, it, you saw a tremendous move in credit in Japan. You saw that the Japanese, the BOJ, the Bank of Japan, is holding um, the 10-year yield there at 25 basis points. It They have promised at 25 basis points unlimited buying, unlimited, so that the yield would never go up above it. It did. It went to 25.7. They can't hold it. So they've doubled down, and they said that they're not going to buy $500 billion worth of, or 500 billion yen, excuse me, half a trillion yen. Of, of notes of between the five and the 10 year, we'll see if that can help them hold the peg. They can't hold the peg uh, as well. You've got currency markets 
around the world, whether it's the Korean won, the India, the India rupee, that central banks are getting very worried about the, the, the giant volatility in their currencies. Even the White House has said that they're monitoring the stock market. And of course, the crypto markets are nothing short of being on fire. Everything is happening at the same time. That's typical of when you get this kind of capitulation in a market, is that when you stress it, every single problem comes to the surface at the same time. And we're starting to see all those problems come to the surface at the same time. Again, this comes back to Friday morning, we had this uh, shocking CPI report, and that was it. Whatever lingering transitory beliefs were out there were gone. People that before Friday said all the bad news is priced in wasn't even close to being priced in. It is now finally being priced in. A persistent inflation is being priced into these markets. And like I said earlier, I don't know if we're done pricing it in, but it is definitely a work in progress. And how about the Fed's reaction? Now, the Fed is very interesting in what they've announced today. Normally, the Fed uses forward guidance. And I've always you know, quipped that what forward guidance means is they got to tell you 12 times that they're going to do something before they do it. Warn you ahead of time. Warn you, warn you, warn you. Here we go. Are you ready? Here it comes. Here it is. There it was. No one was shocked. That's basically what forward guidance was. So when everybody started talking about 75 basis points after this CPI meeting, I was of the opinion, yeah, well, maybe the Fed would want to do that, but they didn't forward guide it. They've been forward guiding 50 now for several weeks. Well, that all changed literally about an hour and a half before we record this podcast because Nick Timoros, the um, uh, chief economics correspondent or the Fed mouthpiece, came out with a story and basically said that the Fed is, or has been interpreted as, the Fed is considering 75 for Wednesday. Well, the odds of a 75 basis point move or what was priced in in the market back before CPI on Friday, that was two trading days ago, was 4%. It got to 28% before the Wall Street Journal story came out. That's still less than 50. It's now 92%. So the market is basically, and it, we saw one of the largest moves in years in the Fed Fund Futures contract in an hour after that story came out because it completely priced from 50 basis point hike to a 75 basis point hike. Now, what's interesting about that is, the, you know, there's always been an age old argument. Who, who sets Fed policy? Does the Fed set it and the market follow? Or does the market force the Fed's hand, or do they have some kind of an agreement? Well, the Fed came out over the weekend. Some Fed officials came out over the weekend and said 50 basis points next week. Now we're at 75. What changed? There's only one thing that changed. The market priced it in, and the stock market was tanking, and, and two-year yields were soaring. So basically, the market was pretty much demanding that the Fed go 75, and the Fed bowed to the market's wishes, at least if according to what we're believing with the Timoros story in the Wall Street Journal, and is going to give us 75 on Wednesday. Now, we'll find out whether or not that happens, but the market is pricing in a 92% chance that it's going to happen. If, if that is what is priced in Wednesday morning, still 92, and the Fed does not deliver on that, then the volatility we'll see on Wednesday could be even more than what we've seen for the last couple of days. So I'm going to assume that that's what they're going to do, even though I didn't think they were going to do that. And I'm going to then ask the question, who drives Fed policy, the markets or the Fed? And it looks like this round was won by the markets and that forward guidance might be no more and that now the Fed's going to do like you or I do. We're going to go to the CME page or we're going to go to a WIRP, go on our Bloomberg, and we're going to let the market tell us what policy is going to be. And the Fed's going to go, oh, I guess the market wants us to do this. So, guys, let's get together and let's vote on that. And we're going to just agree with what the Fed wants. So that's how I think that the Fed's reaction was to this, because there was no real news today to get them to change from 50 to 75 other than the market wanted them to change. So that could also be a sea change. And we'll see 
what questions get asked of Jay Powell about his forward guidance debt. Jim, thank you for your thoughts today. Thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day.